So we're going to be modeling formulas and rearranging them. So your quiz had something very similar to this, which are considered thinking questions. Questions you haven't seen before, but you have the knowledge to solve. So, of course, we didn't make it quite this hard on the quiz. I have a question here. Here is a triangle. And the goal of this question is to make a formula that tells us what D is equal to while using the two other variables A and B. So there's a whole lot of information we already have to know about triangles. Do we know what triangles add up to? All the angles, John? 180, right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is because there's three, I'm going to put in a third little angle here. And we know that angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees. Great. There's something else, another formula I'm hoping we might know. Oops, one. What about if I'm trying to find the angle between C and D? What do we know about that? Right. That's right, because it's a straight line, we know that C plus D also equal 180. Okay? So, I could show you with substitution, but it might confuse you because we don't go that deep into math yet. But I want you to get used to this idea that look at this letter C here. Okay? C is involved in both of these formulas. Okay? And they both add up to 180 degrees. What does that tell you about a relationship between A and B and D? C we know will be the exact same angle, right? A plus B equals D. That's right. Because C, let's say it was the number 100, okay? That means D would have to be what? 80. And if C is 100 here, oops, sorry about that. A plus B would have to be how much? 100. 100. 80. 80, that's right. We don't know what A and B individually would be, but we know together they would have to add up to D. Okay? So let's try to create a formula from that. What would I say D is equal to, Bryden? D is then equal to what? A and B. A, and how do I say A and B algebraically? A plus B. That's right. A plus B. So we've just created our formula. Okay. We know that D is equal to A plus B. And, uh, and that's something you guys can kind of look at from a triangle, that A plus B will technically be equal to this obtuse angle D here. Okay. So with that being said, I want to rearrange this formula. Now this looks confusing. The only time we've done rearranging of a formula, we usually have something like this. Maybe it says uh, 3x plus 2 equals 1. Okay. This is a variable here. D, A, and B are all variables also. And actually, I'm going to change this question a little. I'm going to put an X on this side. This X, what number is written in front of this X if nothing's there? One. Okay. And if I wanted to move one X to the other side, what would I have to do? I want to move the whole thing, one X to the other side. Subtract. If I wanted to isolate X, I would divide. If I move the whole thing, I subtract. I want you to think of these. I know there's no numbers in front of them, but we can put values in front to help it look a little more similar to what we've been doing. Okay? So, what number can we put in front of D? One. Yeah, we can say this is 1D is equal to, how many A's do we have? 1A plus how many B's do we have? 1B. Okay? I want to isolate for B. Okay. Just B. What would my first step be to isolate for B? When I divide, remember we do something with bed mass, right? We usually do reverse bed mass. So what are we going to move first? Right? Uh, a. That's A. We want to move this A. And because there's one A here, is it positive or negative? Positive. positive. When I move it to the other side, what will it become? Negative. Negative. Great. So let's say we now have 1D minus 1A is equal to 1B. Now, all these ones, 
Do they have to be in there? No. no, none of them have to be in here. The only reason I wrote it there is because I've noticed on your quiz, many people got really confused when it was just letters. You were unable to do stuff because it was just letters. So there are numbers involved. Now, how can I rewrite this without any of the ones? What would this say? Perfect, D. Because 1 times D is what, no, or what value? D, right? 1 times anything is the value of the number. So 1 times D is just D. 1 times A is just A. So we have minus A is equal to 1 times B, which is B. So B is equal to B is equal to D minus A. Really, we don't have to do all these steps with these number ones. I just want you guys to notice that all we really did was move A over, and because A was positive, it became a subtraction sign. So if the ones help you, you can do it. But really, it's unneeded. We just have to move A over. So let's do something similar to that in the next question. I want to find the circumference of this circle. That should not say pi. That should say radius. Okay. So... Circumference of the circle is the distance around the outside of the circle. So we start here, and we would go all the way around this circle to right back, okay? So, does anyone know a formula for circumference in reference to a radius? Yeah. 2 pi r. 2 pi r, great. So we know that circumference is equal to 2 pi r. Now this looks a little confusing. Why? Why is the number two? Does anyone know any other circumference formulas? Uh, that's for area of a circle. So that's everything in between. What's that? Uh, wouldn't it be 2D? Pi D. Yeah. And D stands for what? Great. So let's write another one here. Circumference is equal to D pi or pi D, whichever you want to write. What's the relationship between D and R? Anyone know? R is half of D. In other words, if I take R and multiply it by 2, I get D, right? So the whole idea here is essentially that 2R is equal to D. I took the pi out, we know that 2R is equal to D. And that's something we already know. I just wanted to draw a reference to that. When we multiply, it doesn't matter what order we're in. So in this question, I want to isolate for the letter R. What operation is technically between all of these? This is multiplication. Okay. So because it's multiplication, we're trying to isolate just for the letter R. How do I move 2? Or how do I move 2 pi? I can move one at a time, or I can move both together. It's the exact same operation. What would I do? That's right. Because it's multiplication, we're going to divide. Okay. Now, technically, this pi is another number even though we've written it as a symbol. So we need to divide both sides by 2 pi. Okay. When I divide 2 pi on the right side, what happens to both of them? Yeah, they create a 1 or they cancel out. And on the other side, there's really nothing I can simplify. So I'm left with r is equal to c, which is a variable, divided by 2 pi. That's it. r is equal to c divided by 2 pi. So what this is, is very similar to what we are doing before. We just are kind of unable to simplify once we get to this step. We're very used to having x is equal to just a number. Here we have r is equal to some variable. We don't know a number for that. So we stop here because I can't simplify any farther. And the reason I can't simplify is this is a c and these are numbers. This is some fraction. One last one. What shape is this? Square. Square. Okay. What's area of a four-sided shape? Area. Length times width. Excellent. Okay. Area of it, okay? And tactically, this would be our width. Now, I have a square, which means all the sides are equal. What is the relationship between L and W, then? They're equal. I can write as a formula L is equal to W. So for a square, I'm going to continue this for you. Area of our square is equal to, I can say L times, and what can I replace W with? L, right? They're the exact same. There's no difference. So I can say L 
times L. How can I simplify that? Simplify, I mean like put them together. L squared, that's right. That means area can be written as L squared, right? Remember, these are both to the power of 1. And we're multiplying the base is the same, so we add the exponents together. So I have L squared. Now, this is a little different. We haven't quite done something like this. I want to isolate L. How or what is the opposite operation of squared? That's right. So the opposite of to the power of 2, I'm going to write it like that. The opposite operation is the square root. Now on your calculators, they won't have the number 2 written in there. But you should keep that in mind because there are, and you'll get much farther in math, different types of root. I can have the fourth root. I can have the tenth root. But we don't talk about that in this grade. Okay, so this is the whoops, square root. So in order to eliminate, I need to square root both sides. So we get a is equal to, and in order to eliminate that, I'm going to square root both sides. And I'm going to draw the 2 in. Remember, the 2 won't be on your calculator. I just want you to get the hang of it. So what does that mean? The power of 2 and the square root, what do they do to each other? They essentially cancel out, or you could say they make a power of 1, which does nothing. It keeps the number the same. So these two cancel out. So what am I left with on the right side? On the right side, oh. L. And on the left side, what do I have? Square. square root of A. So L is equal to the square root of A in this question. Okay? So this is everything we just covered. Oh, yeah.